welcome once again, unless it's your first time, in which case, welcome without the once again, to Mighty Morphin Ranger Danger, the podcast where we watch an episode of Power Rangers, the TV show, and then after we watch it, we talk about it. My name's Matt. You are Michael. I am Michael. Welcome once again, Jen. Hello. You're returning, second time on the show. And uh, today we're we... you talking about Christopher Walken. <laughs> second time on the Look, show. I don't want these. I have to break it up with you, you know? <laughs> do it, do it a little, little different each time. Uh, we're, today we're going to watch episode number 44, which is entitled Lions and Blizzards. Yep. Uh, Some sort of ice lion monster. Ah, uh, God, I hope so. That would be cool. Yeah. That's all I got. Okay. Uh, so, uh, oh, hang on. You can find us at www.rangerdangerpodcast.com. You can send us an email at rangerdangerpodcast at gmail.com. We're at Ranger Decast on Twitter. We're also on Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube. Boom. Nailed that. <laughs> You've done it 44 times. I feel like you should be good at it. There's a lot of stuff in there. Okay. Uh, so, we don't have anything really to talk about. So, uh, guest slash guest host Amanda uh, sent us in a list of questions. Yeah. We're going to go through a couple of them. Yep. And uh, hopefully we're going to be funny. So. Don't, don't set those expectations back. <laughs> so, uh, why does Rita Repulsa not conquer a small island or somewhere where there aren't Power Rangers first and build up an army? Well, I feel like Zorna knows whenever Rita does something. Yep. So, despite the fact that she always seems to attack Angel Grove... I suspect even if she attacked, like, Alaska, where, you know, no one cares about, um, they would know, and the Power Rangers Between would. the viewing globe and her telescope, yes. they do appear to have this weird situation where they both know what's going on with the other one at all times. Yes. So... As we've discussed before, I believe it's a metaphor for the surveillance state. Right. Yeah, it's the Cold War. Yeah, that's right. Rita Repulsa is Russia, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> or is sword on Russia. Yet. <laughs> that's it. That's all my that's all my Russian too. That's it. Uh, okay, so why has the American government not taken any measures to capture or contain Rita, particularly as they know where her base is? But like what do you do? I mean I imagine it's a logistics issue. Yeah. You'd have to get forty or fifty soldiers to the moon. Yeah. Which is gonna be tough. And then they're gonna have to capture her somehow. Yeah. And she's got like a lion dude. And a scorpion lady sometimes, and actual magic. I, I know that Goldar is a bit of a coward. Yeah. But I feel like he could probably take... If you saw him the first time, yeah. they were like, go to the moon, fight a witch, <laughs> and out comes this big burly lion dude in huge gold armour. Yeah. That's it, I'm done. Yeah. I'm resigning from army. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think it's just... If, if her base was like... In a submarine in a park, uh, they might get involved. Maybe. <laughs> we'll get to that later. <laughs> they don't. They don't. Uh, don't get your hopes up. Um, but I guess the, it does raise the question why they don't, like, nuke the moon. I guess there's... I'm pretty sure you can't just nuke the moon. It, the moon does tides and shit. I think it's like... I don't... And then there'd be no more scuba diving. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Tides. That would be sad. <laughs> I feel like you can't destroy the moon with a nuclear weapon, though. I mean... It's a quarter of the size of Earth. Yeah, but that's... It's only a quarter of the size of Earth. Oh. Uh, if any of you are moon scientists... <laughs> and who isn't? Please let us know. Yeah. Could you destroy the moon with a nuke? Yes. Isn't that the plot of Armageddon? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Is that not the plot of Armageddon? You really weren't paying much attention to Armageddon. <laughs> there wasn't much to get. Isn't Armageddon where Ben Affleck blows up the moon? Isn't that that movie? No? Basically. <laughs> okay. Close enough. Um... Why do they not have their own planned response when she sends her monsters down to Earth? So why don't we see the soldiers, the army, Does dealing the with them? Does handle it? I mean, sure, but they're an extra governmental body. Yeah. You can't always rely on them. Can't you, though? They seem pretty reliable. Well, except that time that we thought they were evil for a week. Yeah. But that was just... A trick. A trick. Yeah. I don't know. To me, it's kind of like a Commissioner Gordon Batman situation where... Right. I'm sure at first they were a little, like, uncomfortable with it, but... Eventually, you just accept the fact that, you know, they're going to do something about it. And, I mean, we do see seasons of Power Rangers where the Rangers are linked to the government. Yes. In various ways. Yep. So, I guess that's how they solve the problem. Okay. Fair enough. Um, are she and the government in cahoots? Rita and the government? Yeah. What possible benefit 
Is there tourism? The I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, maybe Angel Grove needs to be destroyed for tax reasons. <laughs> <laughs> to tax write off. Yeah, it's a tax write off. And if they, if she were to just destroy Angel Grove, they could get donations. They could build a brand new city instead of this city that's got an abandoned industrial area, three quarries, a park, six miles of desert. To me, it's more like Angel Grove is the most boring place in the entire world. And no one would ever visit there because there's nothing of worth. Right. But now there's giant monsters every week, so you're going to get the thrill seekers and the people who like big things. You got the big banana <laughs> who like big things. Yeah. Do you want to see a giant fish monster? Yeah. Like you know, you, you're in America, you go see Mount Rushmore, which is fine. It's a big mountain with some faces carved into it, or you could see a giant pineapple octopus monster. <laughs> what are you going to choose? Of course, you're going to choose a giant pineapple octopus monster. It moves. I think we've discovered a lot about you just now. <laughs> I feel like we've learned some things. Um, why have the government not made an effort to unmask or investigate the people in bright spandex who own giant robots and regularly fight against alleged threats to the world? I feel like we're learning a lot about Amanda now. <laughs> <laughs> she seems to have some heavy anti-government sentiment. Well, I mean, sure, that may be true. <laughs> we'll have to discuss that with her next time she's on the show. But... It is a reasonable question. Yeah, I don't. I think there's not a lot that they could do. I guess. Yeah. Like they don't know where they come from. They don't know how they appear. I they think just... the more people that are going around in bright spandex, the better. To be honest. <laughs> yeah, well, I think we're all on board with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess. I guess there might be a fear that, like, trying to find out more could send them away. Yeah, you don't scare them off. Because there's speculation that they may be aliens or some kind of otherworldly bit, anything other than just five random teenagers. So, hey, yeah. look, I've seen Man of Steel. I, I, I've seen what happens when the government tries to watch over, like, spy on the aliens from oh, space. Oh, you mean a terrible movie happens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a terrible movie happens. We don't want that. Well, well, it's going to happen. <laughs> a terrible movie will happen. I'm f I'm fond of Turbo Cold and a Power Rangers movie. But, uh... <laughs> Turbo <laughs> Cold, yeah. There's a colon. Yeah. Um, but it's not It's not great. No. But we'll get to that four years from now. Can't wait to now. talk about Ivan Ooze. I genuinely can't wait to talk about Ivan Ooze. Oh, boy. I love that movie, Matt. I love that you movie shouldn't. so much. Okay. I could quote parts of it. Can you or can you quote? I'm not going to quote parts of it on the podcast. Oh, please. No, not happening. Please? No. On the 200th episode when you do a backflip? Can you yeah. quote some of it? <laughs> yeah, while I'm doing a backflip. <laughs> um... My favourite part about that movie is that it was shot in Sydney. Yes. I often go through that part of, like, Darling Harbour yeah. just intentionally to yeah. remember that part of the movie where they're roller skating. Yeah, the roller blading, Michael. It's the 90s. What's the difference? In lion skates. Right, yeah. Or oh, two next to each other. Got it. Yeah. Okay. There you go. You learnt something on Mighty Morphin Skate in Danger. Maybe we, we could do, like, a video podcast where we go to Darling Harbour and, like, Recreate. I mean, shots. we absolutely have to do that when we get after the movie. Yeah, I'll film that for you. Thank you. Thanks. We'll, we'll recreate <laughs> shots from the movie. We'll get some roller blades and like, woo, we're powering I'm worried that this is going to end in a violent injury. <laughs> Six broken ribs. Have you ever roller bladed, Michael? Yes. Yeah. In the past. Okay. It's been fun. Not recently. Okay. Uh, all right. So we're going to go watch Lions and Blizzards. Um, do you think there will be a lion and a blizzard? I feel like. They're not very good at delivering on their promises for this show. <laughs> I feel like we may get, like, half a shot of a yeah. lion yeah. and some white snow. Last week had something fishy. Yep. The week before there was a pig surprise. There, there was a pig surprise. That's true. Um, yeah, okay. We're on a roll. All right, so we're going to go watch that, and uh, we'll be back in a sec. See you soon. And we're back. We just watched episode number 44, Lions and Blizzards. Yep. Th th those things occurred, <laughs> so, but not in the way you expect. <laughs> no, God, don't want to ruin it until you get to it. So I guess we'll just yeah, let's just from the top. Yeah. Okay. So it's the oddball games. Yes. The only type of sporting event in which Jason and Bulk could be evenly matched. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, like we say that, but there's a bit where. They're doing, what do you call it when... It's someone, a wheelbarrow race. What's that? Wheelbarrow race. And it looks like for a while, Bulk and Skull are matching Jason and Trini in the race until Bulk and Skull sort of blow out of it. But it kind of blew me away that those guys were even on par. What can I say? 
they're just incredibly talented athletes. They do get to a lot of physical stuff, so I guess yeah. it kind of makes sense. It always ends up with eating grass, though. It does. does. You know, all. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, uh, Zach is just going to keep trying with Angela. Yeah, this is like the sixth episode that yep. involves Zach. And every time previous to this one, she basically said, fuck off. Yes. So... You know, it's, it's good of him to be persistent, but Is also... It? No, it's a no little, I don't think so. It's a little weird. I think she take the hit now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a harassing this poor woman. Um, okay, so there's a trophy. Yeah. Which is the Brave Lion Trophy. Noble Lion. Noble Lion, sorry. And it's going to be awarded to the winning team at the Oddball Games. <laughs> yeah. We oh, This show, man. Um, so it's got a lion on it. So Rita's idea is to summon a monster called Gotan, the Stormbringer. That's an excellent name. Yeah. That's a uh, great name. Referred to ultimately as Gotan, the Stormbringer, and Gotan, the Lion Goat, yeah. which is a bit more descriptive name. Um, okay, so back at the Oddball Games, yeah. there's, there, there's two teams. There's a red team and a blue team. Yeah. The blue team is Bulk Skull, Angela, and some other people. And extras. The red team is... The five Power Rangers and just two other people, <laughs> just two other random guys. But I don't know why. I they, feel like the Power Rangers would never talk to those two either. Why they didn't should... they just make the teams five people yeah. and have it be Bulk Skull, Angela, and two extras? Yeah. <laughs> and what are all, are all the other kids in teams as well that have just been eliminated? Or that, that was my reading situation. Yeah. Because um, otherwise there's just a whole bunch of kids who are like, yeah, I want to watch Bok and Skull lose a thing. Let's go down <laughs> to the park this week. It's um, the national sport of Angel Grove. So there's a tiebreaker, and it's tug of war, yep. in what must be the muddiest place in the world. <laughs> and there's a pile of, like, it's just... I feel like it was specifically muddied for that purpose. Yeah, but... Like, they're like, get in this mud pit and fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, so, look, the Rangers win. Bulk and Skull and Principal Kaplan, who's there, all get covered in mud. So is Angela. So is Angela. Zach helps her up. She appears to be coming around to the idea. He kind of helps her up and then just puts his shirt down on the ground for yeah, no purpose no. in helping her. No, I, I understand that if she were not already covered in mud. Yeah. But because she is, it doesn't help her in any way. No. For a moment there, I was like, is that like a symbolic gesture? Like, I am... Putting down my team allegiance, and um, but uh, that was probably me way yep. <laughs> over reading. Um, I'd like to take this moment to point out that the actress who plays Angela, yes, her only other credit is in an episode of Walker Texas Ranger. <laughs> so clearly, she was only going to be in shows that had Ranger in the title. <laughs> and once those two ended, she was just out of luck. I don't think there is much else, is there? Um, not that I'm aware of. No. You imagine Walker Power Ranger. Well, he's not a team player, Michael. He doesn't no, play, he, he's he's not a team player, he doesn't play by the rules. He'd just be he just one of them. And he just roamed Texas, solving crimes and fighting giant moon witch monsters. That would be pretty good. Um, so someone's stolen the Noble Lion trophy. Yes. doesn't take long to find out that it's Bulk and Skull, because of course it is. Yeah. Who else would it be in this fucking show? <laughs> um, yep. Yeah. The Power Rangers go to try... Oh, sorry. Hang in there, Michael. I know it was a boring episode. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that once they stole it, though, they went back to the exact same fishing spot from the last episode. Yeah, there's one place in yeah. Angel Grove. <laughs> uh, there's also a desert, and that's basically it. <laughs> and a juice bar. Oh, and a juice bar, yeah. Um, the Rangers go to try and find the trophy. They find some putties. They fight some putties. You know, I... I thought this was a pretty good putty fight. I mean, we got some new music from uh, Ron Wasserman. Yep. He does the music This song show. is called Fight. Yeah. And you know that because the only word in it is fight. <laughs> but he also says they're going to take you down or something, something they're taking like down. That. Yep. Yeah. It's, it, there's some poetry. That's there, about the limit of the language of this show's music yeah. is fight and take you down. Yeah. There was way more impressive, like, kick splits in this yeah. scene the, from everybody. This is what I'm saying. Like, they really stepped it up. And the stuff in the playground, like, they threw them up slides. Yeah, that was they my favourite part. kicked them into swings. It was, <laughs> it was exciting. I thought this is the best putty fight so far. Okay, sure. 
Um, the episode, the rest of the episode, not that good. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is hey. great. I, Gotan is one of my favourite monsters. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If only he hadn't been terrible. <laughs> well, I guess, or we'll discuss that when yeah. we get the list at the end. All right. So, um, what's next? Oh, Rita's going to turn the trophy into Gotan. Oh, sorry. Can I just say that yeah. once they've defeated the putties, Zach goes, that was weird. <laughs> As if them fighting putties isn't the thing that happens every single time before a monster comes. Like, yeah. He, he it's really not should, particularly strange for them. It would be weird if they didn't fight some buddies on that particular day. So, okay, look. Oh, gosh, we're tired. This episode, guys. Uh, Gotan is a monster that's half goat, half lion. Yes. Why did the production staff not make a trophy with a goat and a lion on it? I don't think they had that in the budget, like that. <laughs> I mean, look, I they, probably... They probably borrowed that trophy from it's someone. It's probably hard to find a trophy with a goat on it. I'd yeah. imagine that a goat is not incredibly popular as far as trophies go. Yeah. But, like, that would have made a lot more sense than the goat is just coming out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, also of note is that the monster has a snake on its tail. Yeah. Because it's a... Chim- it's a chimera yeah. monster. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not in the name. No. So, <laughs> Goten aches... <laughs> and that's why it's like, okay. they tried everything. Oh, come on, you talk about Goten is an amazing <laughs> Goten is a great name. Um, so we're back at the juice bar. Yeah. Uh, is it Zach who says uh, we don't need a trophy? Yes. To prove that we're winners? Yes. Or, or Jason, actually. It I'm might sure. be Jason. That sounds like a Jason thing to say. It does. Um, Angela walks in. What does Zach say about Angela? He calls her a... Babasaurus. <laughs> a Babasaurus. That's, that's where it is. Um, for a girl her age, she is dressed in a way... Well, I imagine... Because they're, they're meant to be like 15, right? Yeah. Uh, the show is unclear, yeah. but they're in mid-high school, yes. Yeah. So... It does not seem like an appropriate attire. For <laughs> um, Zach says, I gave up on Angela a long time ago. Yeah. Maybe two to three hours ago... He asked her out. <laughs> like, putting his shirt on the ground next to her. Yeah, like, it, that would be nice for him to say, like, no, look, I've moved on, it's fine. But that is not supported by the text. The three <laughs> minutes of the episode prior. Yeah. Um, and it's a good thing he didn't, because she's going to ask him out for some reason. It turns out you put your shirt on the ground for a lady, they just That's straight a away. That's a range hot tip. Yep. Yeah. If you're interested in someone, take your shirt off and lay it on the ground next to them. <laughs> Especially in muddy areas. <laughs> that works, but that's how you were your girlfriend, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good to know. Um, so, he's going to go to the movies with Angela. And it renders him speechless. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's tried five or six times to ask her out. And the response previously has been to the tune of, fuck you, get away from me. <laughs> so... For her to come up to him and ask him out is a pretty big step. And then as they're walking away, Jason turns back to his friend and says, don't call me, I'll call you. Which, that's not a joke. It doesn't make any sense in that context. Well, I think he's no. saying, like, like when this date is over, yeah. I will become contactable again. Yes, but that, <laughs> but that specific phrase has, <laughs> has a cognitive meaning sure. that is not appropriate in, in that context. <laughs> oh dear. Um so there's a tornado warning. Yeah. Uh Ernie comes in, he's heard on the news. Yeah. Uh Jason says basically get down, get down to the basement, says Ernie. Yeah. The basement of the juice bar, because yeah, of course they have a tornado basement. Well if they're in somewhere where tornadoes happen. <laughs> but they're not. But they don't unless <laughs> go hands around. Well that's the thing, because what Jason says is well oh, must be reader. Yeah. Which implies that like they're not in a place that gets tornadoes. Exactly. Because maybe it has a basement for storage of stock. Maybe. Gym equipment. <laughs> juice. Juice, you know. Also, <laughs> you need to keep juice underground and in the dark, Matt. Everyone knows that. <laughs> with, the, with the dumbbells. Yeah, where it grows. Because it's fruit, right? Just, that's just logic. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Yeah. Um, so... Gotan has got, like, blizzards and storm powers. Yes, as Zordon says, Gotan the Lion Goat brings with it terrible weather. <laughs> Which makes it sound like course. Gotan doesn't create the weather. It just kind of flows him around. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, Gotan's here. I guess it'll be a shower in a bit. 
Fucking Goten. Everywhere Goten goes, he always brings the weather with him. Of course that's Goten. I just washed my car. Of course <laughs> Goten's going to show up. Um, but I don't quite know how he's going to destroy the world with, like, a storm. It's a really bad one. Haven't you seen that movie? Twister? Yes. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, so they go to fight Goten. I also love that Zordon says... Uh, the Goten was created from the Noble Lion statue. Yeah. But it sounds like when the actor's reading the script, he didn't realise that was the name of the statue and was saying that the statue was noble. <laughs> because he was created from the Noble Lion statue. It was like, no, buddy. Take another look at the script. <laughs> read the earlier scenes. You need some context. Uh, you can't expect them to read pages that he's not on. <laughs> yeah. His job is to go in, do this in front of a green screen so they can get his head. I'm pretty sure he did that once, yeah. and they just used that ever since. Because his mouth is, like, blurry. Blurred, yeah. Oh, dear. Um, so, Goten's got a bow and arrow. Yep. Because he's a Kamara monster. Well, you yeah. know, that's their weapon of choice. Makes sense. Yeah. It doesn't it? Yeah. When, when you're <laughs> part lion and part goat and part snake, of course you're going to need a bow and arrow. Um, and there's some discarded columns, pillars... I thought they were like trees. They're like logs. Well, they were completely cylindrical. Yeah. Perfectly cylindrical. Yeah, they were machined. I thought they were big, like, concrete pillars. Yeah. Okay. You know, just in the park. That wouldn't be the first time on the show there's been some pillars there for no reason. <laughs> it's not for no reason. So Goten can hit some Power Rangers. <laughs> can wail on the Power Rangers with the Only pillars. seem to hit their weapons. <laughs> you don't want to hurt them. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then that knocks them to the ocean. Somehow. Yes. Um, Knocks them into a different set. And then the greatest thing in the world happens. The goat head bleeds. Oh, there's a goat head on his chest. I don't think we've discussed this. So he's like a standing lion man. Yeah. And his chest is a goat's head. <laughs> Just What's the name of Captain Marvel's, uh, the original Captain Marvel's friend who's a lion? Uh, oh, God. Tawny something? Yeah, something like Mr. that. Mr. Tawny? Yeah. He's like Mr. Tawny, but with a goat in his chest. And a snake for a tail. Yeah, snake on his butt. You know, as you do. As you do. Um, so the goat's head bleats, and it makes a tornado <laughs> that picks up the Power Rangers. And what happens is a tornado appears on the screen, and they all get close together and start walking around in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know. What can you do? <laughs> um, so we cut back to Zack in his movie. Yep. And Zack's communicator goes off. Yep. And uh, Angela says, what's that? And he says, oh, it's nothing. It's my popcorn alarm. <laughs> <laughs> Which... That's a pretty great line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it makes, like... Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> sure. Yep, yeah, I guess it is. Well, that's going to be the next excuse for everyone on a date. Oh, yeah. sorry, I've got to go in my popcorn Pop alarm. alarm. Yeah. <laughs> We're in a fancy restaurant. You know, no, I need popcorn. <laughs> That's why. There's no popcorn yeah, here. I can't get it here. My alarm's going off. Flame <laughs> yeah. me know. There's no popcorn in the area. So, Zach goes to fight the monster. He helps a yep. bit. Um, After a low tracking shot of his cannon. Yep. We get. We do get, like, a close-up of his axe. Yep. I'm so tired. Um, hang in there. Okay. So... Goten grows to giant size, creates a blizzard. The goat head creates a blizzard. <laughs> which is represented by just... Confetti. Confetti all over, <laughs> but over everything we see from here on out. It's great. Even on the dinosaur sequence. Yes. Yeah, so it, it doesn't change scale at different sizes of the shot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just a, an effect they put over the footage they already have. Yeah. With the yeah. episode for me. Um, it's pretty great. Yeah, it's good. Uh, it freezes the Megazord, which gives us, like, the Megazord replaced with what's well, probably a toy of the Megazord covered in fake snow. It looks like a styrofoam cutout. Is yeah. what it looks like. It's pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, and it's got a hockey stick now because Because it's ice weapon of choice. Yeah, you know, that's, that's how that works. Chimera's are from Canada, right? <laughs> Yep. Well, like, what can you do with a bow and arrow during frozen? That's his season? arsenal, yeah. you got a bow and arrow for the summer and a hockey stick for the winter. <laughs> That's just common sense. Isn't that, doesn't everyone have that stuff? 
I also think I've seen in my life hockey sticks used more as weapons than for hockey. Than for <laughs> hockey. Even in games of hockey. Yeah. I just wondered what he was going to do to it when he got there. Just going to just... <laughs> Swip the leg? With, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't really get to do anything. Um, I wish that it just, like, he just hit them with it and they just, like, slid across to the beach. Like <laughs> The reason that he isn't able to hit them is because they spin the Megazord because they still have traction on the wheels or something. <sighs> yeah, and look. And the, the, little, the frost action. Yeah. If the show is going to keep putting the Megazord in trouble, it needs to come up with better ways to get out of that trouble. Okay? Last week we converted some goo into energy magically. This week we somehow spun around despite being completely frozen. Uh, not only does this thaw them, it also makes Gotan a bit dizzy and stumble around. <laughs> <laughs> it's not how dizziness works. They're the ones spinning, guys. <sighs> yeah, they get the sword, they kill the monster. In exactly the same shot as last time. Game over. End of episode, basically. Oh, <laughs> no, Matt, because you're leaving out the greatest line of dialogue <laughs> the show has ever produced. Okay? So, back at the command centre, um, you know, everyone's just doing their usual post-game update. Oh, I forgot about this. Yeah. I sure what we're talking about. What, what happened, you know, we killed the goat monster, and someone says, another happy ending. Yeah, that's... Uh... Guys, if you're driving, you need to pull up. <laughs> <laughs> because Zach says... There's a look, he, there's the shot of him happy, and then he goes, oh no, speaking of happy endings, <laughs> I left Angela back at the theatre. <laughs> <laughs> These are, I made, that when, I think it's Alpha 5 who says, oh, another happy ending at first, and I made the joke, and I was like, oh, happy ending, because of his day, and then he makes it, <laughs> and I was like, whoa, no, this is a children's program, that's not I okay. I cannot imagine that meaning anything other than what we're taking it to mean. No. <laughs> um, look, frankly, more of that sort of writing, guys. Like, and I then, know it's 20 years ago and you can't change the show, <laughs> but after Zach does that, Alpha 5 laughs like yeah. it's a joke. <laughs> yeah. So clearly they know what he was talking about too. <laughs> oh, it's, just, it's just beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm going to cut that out and show that to everyone who's ever been on this show. Yeah. Just as proof that occasionally it is amazing. Yeah. Um, Zach comes back. He's got two buckets of popcorn. He says to Angela, I'm sorry. Uh, he does a really long line. Yeah. Look, he's been gone maybe 10 minutes. I don't know about that. Really? I think the Megazords, like, the Zords coming out takes a while. You know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I always imagine that taking as long as it takes for us to watch it. No, because it's, it's fast cut. Okay, fine. I think he's gone for a good hour. You reckon? Yeah. Okay. So he's missed a lot of the feature film. So she's got every right to be upset. Yeah, absolutely. Probably not every right to upend her popcorn on his head and then put the bucket on his head like a hat and <laughs> off. I don't know. Look, if I was upset on a date to the movies, I think that's what I would do. I think the best thing is he doesn't react at all. He just stays watching the movie. He's like, yeah, okay, that's fair enough. I deserve this one. I think that's why I really like Zach. You know? yeah. He's not offended. He's just like, fair cop. Yeah. I'm just going to enjoy the movie now. I'm just going to eat this popcorn yeah. by myself. That would have been a great place to end the episode, I feel. Yes. That's not what happened. Which is why we get another scene with Bulk and Skull. <laughs> so, they've got a, there's a policeman with them. Yep. Uh, imagine a 1970s pornography policeman. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this man looks He's got a moustache. He's he, heavily muscled. Yep. He could not look any more like a stripper if he was wearing no clothes. <laughs> um, and he wants someone to identify Bulk and Skull. Yep. Or just to acknowledge that they know them for some reason. And then he kind of leaves them. Like, well, the thing is, he first comes in and is asking for someone to identify them. And then Jason is like, oh, I think they're the creatures from the back of the <laughs> lagoon. I was hoping at this point, the police officer would be like, no, this is serious business. You know, they're under arrest. They're like, under- <laughs> I need to charge them with something. Yeah, you shouldn't joke at times like this. And then maybe pull out his handgun, shoot Jason. But that might be- <laughs> And then become the new Red Ranger. <laughs> yeah. Officer Mustachi. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He'd be a much more responsible leader. You really don't like Jason, do you? Ah, uh, he's just a... He's just, he, like, I would be fine with him if he wasn't the leader. Okay. You know? He's just too thick. Anyway. All right. So, they say, yeah, we know Bulk and Skull. Yeah. And that's... I mean, 
The police officer doesn't do anything else. I'm not entirely well, as long as you know the multi sleep for yeah, then. Yeah, okay, fine. If you know them well. If you know them we know that they're not Russian spies. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll let them go. Um Russian spies hiding in the lake. I don't think that's how police work. <laughs> but I mean I don't know what crime they're meant to have committed other than fucking around in the lake. Yeah, that's illegal. Is it? Yeah. Why? You can't fuck around in the lake. You could fish in the lake. No, that said no fishing, Michael. Well, that's, <laughs> true. that's true. There was a sign. I forgot. <laughs> yeah. No, I think they're just not meant to be fucking around the lake. And I should mention, they're covered in mud. Yeah. Like, head to toe, covered in mud. Mind you, they were covered in mud. Then they went in the lake and they were magically clean again. Then somehow fell back into the mud. There's mud at the bottom of the lake. Somehow. I don't know. It's dumb. It's stupid. I don't know nothing. <laughs> um, look, there's a frog in Bob's shirt. It makes him squirm around. Ernie tips a bucket of water on his head. It makes him look actually better than he did previously. And we just freeze frame on his glistening face. <sighs> Although, he does look genuinely happy to have found the frog, which I think is kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's found a friend. And I like that. That's cool. It's just... <sighs> At some point, they get their motive becomes... To unmask the Power Rangers. Yeah. And I hope we get something different out of that. Yeah. Because at this point... Yeah, I think we're running out of ways for Bob to get weird goop on his face. (laughs) (laughs) I thought that 30 episodes ago. Oh, dear. So that's it. That's it. Um, So, Matt, where does Goten rank? I I, I feel like you liked Goten more than I liked He's Goten. the deal, right? Yeah. I like Goten as an idea. Yeah. I think Goten the Stormbringer is an excellent name. Yes, I agree. I think he, he visually he's interesting and cool. Yeah. I just think he does nothing. Yeah. But that's true of basically every monster on this show. <laughs> well, I think the problem is that we've hit a period now where they're, they're having the Japanese footage made especially for them. Well, no, this is the last Zone Ranger monster. Oh, okay. This is the last one. They saved the best for last. Okay, cool. So from now on, it's like you do. More or less, yeah. Okay. It's just because the structure now seems a lot more, like, standardised yes. than it was before. You Thank know? God. No, I didn't know about things. Because before, it was interesting because it was really weird. <laughs> now it's like, you know, there's some sort of social problem. Monster cars, they grow. They don't even have, like, the dragon sword to make cool different formations of swords. It's always the same thing. Yeah. I'll, I'll deal with it for a bit. It seems like we're in a bit of a holding pattern, is all I'm sure. saying. So it's hard to get interesting stuff out of it. Uh, all right, so the list. Yep. Uh, where, I don't know that I would put him anywhere in the top, like, 15. Okay. I reckon, uh, I've got to say, I reckon he was cooler than Goofish. Yes. He's definitely cooler than Goofish. Cooler than Goofish, I would agree. Um, <laughs> was he, co- he wasn't cooler than Babe Ruthless. No, Babe Ruthless was amazing. Babe Ruthless was a baseball monster. Oh, amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> um... Where is Babe Ruthless? Oh, see, Babe Ruthless is at, at 18. Babe yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Was he cooler than Scorpina? Uh, uh, I don't think... Scorpina, Scorpina's pretty bad. She's like a non-coward version of Golda. Sure. That's pretty cool. Is he cool? He's cooler than Babu. Yeah. Yeah? But what about, what about Mutitis? We have Mutitis on there. Is 21. Yeah. Uh, okay, maybe you're right. Maybe in front of Babu. Okay. So, so that puts him at number 20. On the list. So yep. just push Babu out of the top 20. Sorry, Babu. Bye bye, Babu. Actually, so glad you got to It's a good that. thing it wasn't Babu's debut. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. No more of that. Cool. <laughs> You'll have to get a tattoo. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Babu. Oh, dear. I'm so tired. All right. Uh, Jane, did you have anything you wanted to say? Um. Not really. To be honest, I stopped listening after the happy endings thing because I was just <laughs> laughing so much that yeah. I couldn't. Quite That's get frankly, past we it. should stop the podcast after that because <laughs> I don't think it's ever going to get better than that. No, um, it's genius. Yeah. All right. I think we're all good. Yeah. So thanks for listening again. Uh, we'll be back next week with episode forty-five. Yes. Called Crystal of Nightmares, <laughs> which sounds probably going to be terrible. Like, yeah. <laughs> statistically. Uh, And we're hoping to get back a return guest who you've demanded. So stay tuned to find out who that is. Yeah. Uh, Other than that, we've got some stuff coming up on the horizon, but nothing that's worth talking about yet, I don't think. I wouldn't say it's not worth talking about, just that we can't talk about it yet. Sure. Because it'll ruin the surprise. That's right. 
Yeah. Uh, okay, Matt, where can they find us? Did you tell them already? Yeah, we've done that. Remember, I nailed it. Oh, I don't... I lose track of them all. Okay. They'll blur into one. All right. Well, yeah, we, we've got a website. We're on places. You can do stuff. Beep our boops, as uh, <laughs> your brother said the other day. Yeah, beep our boops to do the stuff. Uh, thank you guys for listening, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.